I'm Michelle Blue. I'm a millennial entrepreneur and started a business just two weeks after graduating college. <laughs> <laughs> it's my life and I don't even know. Okay. Each week, I'm interviewing an entrepreneur, getting a real look at their stories. The reason why it was challenging because there's no set path for entrepreneurship. At the lessons, the sacrifices along their journey. And yeah, leadership is hard, and you have to live at home, and entrepreneurship is not easy. So, for the fellow entrepreneur, hopeful entrepreneur, or whatever path you decided to take in life, just know that the beauty lies within the journey. Watching. It's really hard. I'm gonna be watching. Awesome, Zacho. <laughs> I'm glad you're ready because Zach, first of all, I absolutely love you. We met in college served on Terry Ambassadors together, but I think like our love and our friendship really happened like after college through business, right? So we like connected over entrepreneurship. So I knew I wanted to sit down and talk to you, but a couple weeks ago you sent out an email, right? And I was like sitting at my kitchen table and I'm reading over it and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get Zach, like, I have to talk to Zach. You moved up in, like, my priority. Like, I was like, he's number one person that I need to sit with. And, you know, your email was very, like, thought out, very, I don't know, very concise, but pretty much you were saying the business that you've been running for the last, what, year or so, year and a half, yeah, two years, year and a half or so. that you were closing. Yep. And, you know, my heart sunk for you just because... And I was, again, excited to get you here because people are not telling that story. No one's telling that story, right? Because facts, statistics say that most first-time businesses don't succeed, right? Mm -hmm. But no one is telling you you're not actually <clears throat> seeing that and what that looks like. So tell me about Almost Boots and your lessons that you learned, that you put in your email of that you learned from closing your business or just your entrepreneurial journey. Yeah, absolutely. So Ombos, like you know, is um, we are, are we're working with artisans in Guatemala. Yeah. Um, they make handmade leather goods, boots, bags, belts, stuff like that. We started off with just boots and then expanding up, ended up expanding into more product categories. Um, and the whole idea is that it's quality craftsmanship and development done right. Yeah. The name Ombos means both in Spanish. So the idea is that it's both those things that I just said, quality craftsmanship and development done right. Yeah. Um, and that whole idea that you really can't have both because I think a lot of times in our, um, in business or in our world, we tend to think that it's one or the other, you know, that you can't have something that has a purpose and it's also really well made mm -hmm. and vice versa. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of the way that we approached the market and um, everything that we did with artisans was incremental revenue for them. Never asked them to walk away from any other things they were working on or any other uh, business or income sources yeah. and everything the demand that we could generate on the state side was incremental for them mm -hmm. so yeah that's kind of the basics of what almost was right and I love it you know and um, you you go into it thinking okay I'm going to start the business I'm going to like create this beautiful product right and then people are just going to come and that's not necessarily the case you're like why <laughs> not like your boots are like baller like beautiful leather beautiful craftsmanship you're like changing lives with it so you're like okay this is a given like yeah. it's gonna sell like yeah you know the hard work is done but that's not necessarily the case right yeah, for sure mm -hmm. so go ahead and give me your first lesson that yeah. you learned along your entrepreneurial journey yeah i'll change up the order just to go in with kind of what you just said i mean yeah. one of the lessons of the three that i kind of like tried to boil it down to was um, build a, become an expert in what you're yeah. trying to do. Uh, and this is all kind of like, this is just my experience, but I could have tried to do almost differently, I think. And people have emailed me back and said, hey, I, you know, I don't know if I would agree with that or like whatever, and that's, that's great. Everybody has their own experiences. This is just kind of like from my perspective yeah. and for this business. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, become an expert like two, three years out. Yeah. Like start learning about that business, start reading reports, start getting industry information, start going to industry events start networking with other people um, that are in that business. And when you meet people at a random dinner party, tell them, yeah, I import handmade leather goods from Guatemala. Don't tell them uh, I sell software. Um, mm -hmm. So that people start connecting you with that, uh, 
with that business that you want to be in one day. Right. I mean, obviously, you want to be truthful. So just right, right. tell people what you do, but also say, this is where I really want to go. Yeah. Um, and then build that. And that's for two reasons. It's one, so you do have the knowledge and you um, you know more about the business when you try to get into it. And it's also so that you have the support when you do get into it. You have the network of people that you can call and say, hey, I'm dealing with this like pricing strategy issue and I don't have any idea how to go about it. How do you, can you help me out? Mm -hmm. You know, but if you don't build that up over time, you kind of are just left there in your office with, you know, your own thoughts. whoever you yeah. can scrounge up to help you out. Yeah. And that was one good piece of advice that I got along the way was, hey, get an advisory board. I ended up having some pretty, um, I'm super thankful. It's my dad, my mentor from Georgia Pacific, and another guy that was working with artisans in, uh, I think, Nicaragua, yeah. doing pottery. Yeah. So all those people are super valuable. No, that's awesome. And I think even for me, But they didn't, especially the first two, didn't know anything about yeah. Consumer facing fashion labels. Yeah. You know? And I mean, that's so important. And like I was saying with me, like I graduated and two weeks after I started the business full time, you know, my yeah. best friend and I, and I didn't know anything. And so there was a lot of time lost, but there was also a lot of money lost as well, just because there was so much trial and error in that. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's something you don't get back. And I wish I did have more mentors in that space that could kind of lead me and guide me into this. I wish I would have taken more internships in college. I wish I would have, you know, gotten more experience so that, you know, I personally, Michelle, wouldn't be losing money, but I could have learned on their dime a little mm -hmm. bit more, too. So yep. um, I think that's such a really interesting point, you know, and everyone is different. Yep. So um, I've been able to learn as I go, but still, there's no guarantees. Yeah, there's for definitely sure. no guarantees in that. And it's not to say that you're ever going to get there, right? Like, yeah. two to three years isn't a magic number. Maybe it's less time if you spend more time learning and more time, like, meeting the right people. But the point is just, uh, yeah, be building it up over time. And you're never going to feel 100% ready. At some point, yeah. it's going to feel like you're at a ledge and you have to take a You just got to jump. Yeah. yeah. For sure. I think that's a really good point. Okay. Um, number so two or number one, lesson, whatever. Yeah, um, is keep your day job, basically. Like, keep your whatever consistent source of income. I mean, most people that are... Um, entrepreneurially minded have a job yeah. um, and they have income so my, my thing or one thing that hurt me I think was giving that up a little early mm -hmm. um, and so yeah keep your day job as long as you can yeah. and really make your business force you out of your day job yeah. to the point where there really is just um, so much you, you have to do and I don't know, that's a tough thing to balance because that was one of the reasons I ended up quitting my job because I just looked at all the stuff that was going to take to start a business and I was like yeah. I need 80 hours a week. Yeah, not, I need the time. Yeah, not right? like 30 to 40 that I can scrounge up after my day job. Right. So, so the thing is, businesses are going to cost like 10 times more than you ever think it's going to cost, right? Yeah. So you like fly through money a lot faster. Yep. And I mean, for regular people, you have like rent and I don't know, college debt and other like, I don't know, because I don't really those pay regular these things. people. <laughs> I've heard that some of these people have these items. I don't pay those things. I don't really know, but I'm assuming that's what you had to do, right? You still yeah. had to live. You still had to eat. Yeah. So it's like you had to have some income coming in to keep you yeah. afloat, you know? And I think people look at me sometimes because, again, I don't pay rent and different things like that, but I'm living at home for free, which is how I'm able to do the business for free. If I um, had college debt, I wouldn't have been able to move yeah. as freely. If I had bills, I wouldn't have been, been able to move as freely. Yeah. So... That's really well, interesting. That's a, I mean, that's an interesting point, right? Like, I think, I never asked my parents, but I think they probably would have let me, like, live at home yeah. if I wanted to and cut down on that, you know, seven, $800 worth of expense a month of mm -hmm. living um, in a house with, with friends. But uh, I was kind of like, man, these are some, from my perspective, I was like, these are vital years of my life. I don't know if I want to miss this opportunity to live with some close friends before you're married. And mm -hmm. that's real life decision you have to make, you know, and that's yeah. a sacrifice you've made for your business. And it's one that, I kind of decided I didn't want to make, and I didn't feel like I necessarily had to, but who knows, maybe that would have, I mean, that definitely would have saved a bunch of cash had yeah. I um, moved back home, but, so I don't know, those are real decisions you have to kind of contemplate when mm -hmm. you start doing this kind of stuff. No, for sure, and even, okay, so I lived at home, but I still had to make money, you know, I still had to do, like, little odd jobs, like, I've, yeah, sure. I literally have been in Sam's Club, like, peddling pizzas, you know, like, you know, giving the samples out and stuff. Nope. To have extra money to yeah. eat, to pay for gas, yeah. you know, the little expenses that are always going to incur yeah. in life. So it's always a sacrifice. Yeah. It's in you. Sometimes you have to do the things you would never imagine yourself doing, you know, to yeah. build something that you love and something that you believe in. So, yeah. 
Okay, cool. And lastly. Yeah, the last one was um, have a bona fide go to market strategy. Yeah. So, um, like you said, you started off saying like, oh, the the product's amazing. The story's like it's a really good purpose behind the business. There's meat to why you're doing it. Yeah. Um, and so the people are just gonna come. They're yeah. gonna hear about it. I'm gonna stay on social media. Like they're just gonna find out. I'm gonna have a good, a decent looking website. I know I'm not like I'm not a developer. I'm not an front end engineer. Mm -hmm. But you Squarespace get a decent looking website. Um, in between social media, people will just find out about it. Yeah. That is not the way the cookie crumbled for me. No. I don't think it's or the way it crumbles it for most people. It doesn't crumble for me that way. I promise you, it doesn't. Yeah. So, I mean, um, okay, so how do you know when it's bona fide? I would say part of, like, the lesson number one that we were talking about of building that network is once you've got that network, and this is something that um, I'm actually, I guess I'm not, because I'm kind of have sent out my final email, but yeah. I'd love to, maybe from social media. Um, Nisolo is a company that does similar work to what Ambos does, and they're out of Nashville. They started five years ago, kind of before before, before this whole like ethical business yeah. thing um, movement came into like prominence, I would say. But they're a great business. They're coming out of Peru, handmade uh, shoes, and now they're getting into some other different goods as well. But one of the things Patrick, um, their founder and CEO, told me was uh, he sent out his business plan to like a hundred people, like yeah. anybody that would be close enough to like respond and give yeah. him some input. And just said, hey, like, poke holes in it. What do you think? Does it have any, does it have legs? And I thought that was a really good idea. Yeah. Um, so, you know, have a have whatever you think the plan is. And then submit it to other people to decide whether or not it's bona fide. Yeah. You know, say, hey, that has, that has a chance of working. And, like, you know, not to get too business specific, but for me, like, there's really only a few options. It's, like, it's wholesale or it's a very good, like, developed, um, you know, e-commerce strategy. Yeah. And how are you going to drive the traffic and awareness of the site? You gotta be able to actually answer those questions. Mm -hmm. And e-commerce is it's not two thousand and one or nineteen ninety nine anymore. It's very crowded and very competitive. Very competitive. You have to pay to do anything to get noticed at all. Yeah. Um, but you know, something I was saying. And the about expectations earlier, consumers have on your sites. Yeah, that's true. It's like you can even do things like getting pre you know, do pre orders, right? And so mm -hmm. that's before you actually purchase all this inventory. It can kinda get to see like what the demand is looking like before you have like a hundred, you know, boots yeah. sitting in your garage. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there's definitely ways to do it. And sometimes hindsight is twenty twenty, of course, you know. Um, but that's all a part of the journey. It's like you live, you learn, you make mistakes, you cry, you lose, you win, you yep. know. Um, but I love just the transparency of it all, right? Yep. Because as entrepreneurs, we kind of have to put on this facade in a sense, right? You know, put on the face, like, you know, the winning game face, like everything's yeah. going well. And that's not always the case, you know? Yeah. We're all like trying to figure it out. We're all going through some type of internal battle, um, you know, with our businesses. Yeah. So I think that's really cool. And, and this is something I've personally had to, you know, I've struggled with because again, kind of the face of, of the brand. And it's like, okay, Michelle is not Benet, you know? And Zach is not on those boots. And so it's like making sure your identity is not tied to your business. Yeah. You know, which is major. And making sure that if things don't go as 100% planned with Benet or on those boots, then I'm not a failure. Michelle, that does not make me a failure. And it's being able to, like, make that disconnect, right? Yeah, for sure. Like, and I think that applies to a lot of parts of life, right? Like, yeah. ultimately... We'll have different jobs. We'll have different um, organizations we're a part of. You might be on a Terry Ambassador and then on the Young Alumni Board, or you might have an all-star kid or a kid that's not as good, or you might have uh, a marriage that has some struggles. Like, we're going to have all kinds of different influences in our life, and this is uh, – we don't want to be based on these things that come and go, right? Yeah. Like, you've got to find something that uh, is more permanent than that. For sure. And I know for you and I, it's a similar faith. and. Yeah. Um, but you, you got to find that. Yeah. I think that's very important to, like, overall success uh, yeah. if you look across the whole span of your life. Like, my value, my worth, my identity is not my business. Like, Michelle is a person. Benet just happens to be my business and something that I love to do. Yep. So, um, like I said, I love your story. Thank you for sharing the story because, again, no one's talking about that, you know? Yeah. And I think people always say, like, the first business you learn the most in the second business you earn the most, right? So yeah. I know this is not the end of your entrepreneurial journey, you yeah. know. Um, Hopefully it's just the second <laughs> business. I've heard sometimes it's the 10th business. <laughs> I'm like, 10th? Oh, my gosh, I'm, I'm not ready. I hope it's not the 10th. Hopefully it's the second. Um, 
but yeah, you know, you're making the steps. It's going to be great whatever you decide to do next. And yeah. I'm looking forward to hearing what you do next. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Um, and so with all of that, I always love to close out with um, a song lyrics. So I'm like, okay, give me that one song that like motivates you and keep you going, right? Because it gets yeah. tough. You have your ups, you have your downs, you lose, you win, like I said. So what is that lyric that just kind of keeps you going through it all? Yeah. Um, I might have to sing it a little bit to like catch up with what it is. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) You can consider it a serenade. Oh, (laughs) nice. (laughs) Uh, So it's a Garth Brooks song and it's called The River. And it goes, like a bird upon the skies. Or, like a bird upon the skies. These waters are my skies. I'll never never reach my destination if I never try. Like a bird upon the wind, these waters are my skies. I'll never reach my destination if I never try. Yeah. I love that. And you just With the good Lord as wait, <laughs> like a bird upon the wind, these waters are my skies. I'll never reach my destination if I never try. Yeah, yeah. that's the main part. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Zach. Sorry, getting a little mixed up there. No, you're fine. But no, I love it. And the thing is, you start. You have to start because you never know what's going to be on the other side, right? Yeah. It could succeed, and even if and that's a really good point, is that there are going to be a lot of uh, like tailwinds that are happen. Like you'll meet some really cool people and this person will call up and want to like work with you like a lot of cool things will start happening once you get in the arena right yeah like you can't just sit on the sideline and not really be involved it's once you start moving things will happen to help you get there yeah and i know you've had a million things like that i've had a million things like that for sure it's fun yeah so i love it and i love again your whole story and almost it's not not a failure at all it is closing it is wrapping up but think about the impact right so I read your email and you wrote the numbers. It was like thousands of dollars in incremental income these craftsmen, craftsmen were able to make. Yeah. That's no like chunk change. You know, that literally can change their lives, their families' lives, you know? So yeah. um, count that as a great work, you know? Yeah. And be thankful you were able to do it regardless of how, you know, it's come out to be. Yeah. And I think, I mean, some of the impact to me is, like, the the customers we were able to serve, they were able to hear our story. Um, Definitely, like, for the artisans, obviously, that's a big part of what we were doing. But it's also, like, for myself, we had, um, I'm super thankful to have uh, two people work with us over the summer as kind of, like, interns. Um, Our customers were able to touch. And then, like, stuff like this, right? Yeah. Where you get to have a little more exposure towards um, really using business to do something more than just make money, you know? It's like, hey, how can we incorporate doing good um, and, like, really, really fundamentally changing lives through that? So all of that is is a part of the blessing. I remember talking with a guy at Georgia Pacific before I left there full-time, and I was like, man, this conversation, like, right now is part of the reason for this business. Like, this conversation is, like, part of the reason, right? Like, all of those things are, like, there's a reason for it. Yeah, it's always a reason. Very good. Well, thank you, Zach. I appreciate you, Sharon. Loved it. Love you. Thank you, Shelby. Love you too. Good luck in New York. Thank you. I appreciate it. Awesome.